Welcome back to Approved Unto God. I'm Joshua Govitz. We're in the book of James, chapter number 1, and we're going to be picking up at verse number 18, and I uh, plan on going down to verse number 21 today. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Father, Lord, please speak through me. I pray, Lord, that you would just bless this word. As uh, he said, it would not return void. Help me, Lord, to teach others what you've taught me. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, that in the middle section of these verses of scripture, we see the wrath of man. And I've already covered that, not in James, but in Proverbs. And so we're not going to go too in depth there, uh, but we will make some mention of that. Uh, but more of the emphasis is going to be on verse 18 and verse 21, so you know ahead of time. Of his own will begat he us. Know ye not that you must be born again, Nicodemus? That's what Jesus said. You're a religious Pharisee. You're a top Pharisee. But yet, what you do in your own flesh will never satisfy God, will never please God. You need a new birth. You need to be made a new creature. If you're going to enter the kingdom of God, you have to be born again. That means the spirit that dwells in you needs to have God breathe life back into it. Because he breathed life into man in the garden. And man created for himself a dead spirit because the Bible said, God said, God warned that the day that you eat of this fruit, you shall surely die. That was a spiritual death. So now there's of necessity a spiritual rebirth. Nicodemus, you can go ahead and be religious. You can go ahead and keep the commandments but you are going to fall short of the glory of God and you will never enter into the kingdom of God because the kingdom of God is invisible. The kingdom of God is invisible as God is invisible. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You need to have that spirit quickened. You cannot have a, a, a relationship with God as God intended without that spirit being made alive. And that is through the word of God. God makes our spirit alive. Um, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. I was going to go to John chapter 6, but we'll go there in a bit. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth. You first must, must acknowledge that this word is truth. Those that are skeptical, those that mock and scoff at the Bible, they are not going to be born again. You need to believe it is the word of God if it's going to work effectually in you. That's a matter of the ground of the heart. God says in uh, the parables, Jesus speaks in the parables of a heart that needs to be uh, readied to receive seed. And the seed is the word of God. It needs to be meek. It needs to be humble. Not prideful. Not religious. If you're ever to receive the word of truth, you must understand that it is indeed the truth. Very hard for those in college <laughs> being taught that there's no absolutes. Are you absolutely sure about that? <laughs> you know, they, they, they think that there, you can know nothing for certain, nothing for sure. You know, that truth is arbitrary. Well, that's your truth. <laughs> well, that's fine. You know, that you got that's your truth. But truth is universal. Truth is the Word of God. Truth is what lines up with this Bible. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. A kind of. And I can't help but think of Genesis chapter number 1. Let's go there real quick. Genesis 1 and verse 20. All the way back to the beginning. Scripture with scripture. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life. And what are we talking about here? Of 
his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures being born in order to be born life must be present in you bringing forth life but this is a new life here we see God bringing forth life in the waters the moving creature the half life and the fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven and God created the great whales and every living creature that moveth which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind there's the word kind that's what we're looking at and every winged fowl after his kind and God saw that it was good the winged fowl didn't create uh, an animal that was not after its kind. Every animal created after its kind. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful. There's that word, fruitful. First fruits, verse 18, of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits, first fruits of his creatures, a kind of first fruits. So we see kind here in Genesis 1, verse 21. And we see in verse 22, fruit. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth in the evening and the morning with the, for the fifth day. And God said, well, let's look at verse 24, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing. Creeping things make creeping things. Cattle makes cattle. Cattle don't make winged things. No dog is going to create a non-dog. No lion is going to create a kangaroo. It's always after its kind. And God commands them to be fruitful. And God created the man and he said, be fruitful and multiply, didn't he? Well, we're also to multiply. We've been given the ministry of reconciliation. That we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. The first fruits, we've received the first fruits of the Holy Spirit when He begat us. And we are a new creature. Let's look at uh, Romans chapter number, uh, excuse me, let's look at 1 Corinthians 15, 20 through 23. 1 Corinthians 15, 20 through 23. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. He was risen by God's power and by his own power. And he didn't stay in the grave, did he? He's the first fruits of them that slept. The first fruits. And he also brought forth others with him, didn't he? Out of Abraham's bosom, he carried captivity captive into heaven paradise even he changed the location of paradise from the center of the earth over to heaven for since by man came death by man came also the resurrection of the dead for as an adam all die even so christ shall be all made or all be made made alive but every man in his own order the first christ the first fruits afterward they that are christ at his coming so adam created us to die for as an Adam all die we're all created in the image of Adam naturally and we all die even so in Christ shall all be made alive this is that new birth that we're speaking of this is where God begets you but every man in his own order Christ the first fruits he's the first one to be risen from the dead uh, and he sets that precedent for us and we are also going to be raised in the likeness that he was raised at the resurrection Jesus Christ is the first to rise from the dead afterward they that are Christ that is coming and then we can also get into the different resurrections there's the first fruits where Christ rose from the dead and brought the Old Testament saints with him into heaven and then there's a resurrection of the church the harvest at the end of the church age and then there seems to also be one or two resurrections maybe even three in the tribulation period where God's gonna also resurrect the Jewish saint or well any saint really anybody that gets saved in that time verse 18 of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits are you getting a 
handle a little bit of the first fruits. We're the first. Uh, we're the first of this kind. We are sons of God. We were not born sons of God, as some would think, that we're all the children of God, but we're born a second time and we're made the sons of God. To him, or to them, gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And we're a kind, aren't we? We're, we're to reproduce after our own kind. We are to be fruitful and multiply. But how do we do this? By speaking the truth, by preaching the truth, by preaching the gospel. And we should have others that would be born again as fruit. Fruit of the truth. Fruit of God working through us. That we should create after our own kind. We're, we're, we're Christians. We're to create Christians. We're Christians. We're not to create philosophers. We're Christians. We're not to create scoffers. We are to create Christians. That we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Look at... Uh, let me see here. We're going to look at creatures a little bit. 1 Corinthians 5.14. 1 Corinthians 5.14. I hope this is making sense. We're just kind of looking at some of these words and where they're also in the Bible. If you find 1 Corinthians 5.14, let me know. Because it's not in the Bible. I must have meant 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 5.14. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge, that if one died for all, then all or we're all dead. You ain't gonna you ain't gonna get anywhere until you realize that you're dead in trespasses and sins. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. See, we can't please God in our flesh, in the natural man, in the soul even, because soul is self centered. Man is self centered. Man is not interested in pleasing God. Man is not interested, and even if he was, he cannot please God in his flesh, in the natural man. And that he died, we're going to look at that again, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. You cannot live for God, lost man. No lost man can serve God because he's too busy serving another master. He's serving mammon. He's serving his self-interest. And God says, you need to die in order, you need to realize you're, you're dead, and then you need to die to self, if you're ever going to live for me. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh. Yet now, henceforth, know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ... He is a new creature. There's that word creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. What's the old things? Well, number one is you lived unto yourself. You did not live for God in your flesh. And God says, you need to be made a new creature. You need to be put in Christ by faith. And then you will, this is what is a characteristic of the new creature. Now you're going to live for God. And also, you're going to start to live for others. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. We're now reconciled to God. We can have a relationship now with God through Jesus Christ. There's one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. And have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. And we are to minister to others. Every saint is this reconciling ministry that we need to let others know that are dead in trespasses and sins that you can be made alive that you can uh, be quickened in your spirit the only part of you that can know God is your spirit and God wants to make that spirit alive so you can be reconciled to him that he can communicate to you truths from the word of God that you can be more and more like him God wants us to give others the hope 
that you can be reconciled to God. We have a ministry of reconciliation. To wit, or to know, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Verse 18, of his own will begat he us with the word of truth. And we are also to create, to, to reconcile people to God, but it's through his Holy Spirit working through us, and we speak the words of truth. And I'm going back there again to verse, uh, to 2 Corinthians. Verse 20, now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God to beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And we are ambassadors. We are representatives. But we need to represent, represent God according to truth. Many people claim to be representatives of God, but they represent him falsely, poorly. Uh, they, they make up a God that does not fit the Bible, or they base their God off of one scripture that is obscure from the rest of the scriptures that, that is hard to understand, but then they're going to build a, a doctrine off of that. Um, sometimes there's a handful of verses, and you know we're talking about Calvinists, and they represent God poorly. They think that God is the author of not just righteousness, but sin, because everything is his will you can't resist his will and he created pharaoh to disobey and he creates some to disobey he creates some to be vessels of honor some to vessels to be vessels of dishonor some to go to heaven some to go to hell well they're poorly misrepresenting god because god is not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance god is not the author of confusion God is not the author of sin and when we say that he is then we're poorly misrepresenting God we're not being good ambassadors of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures the book of Romans chapter number 8 17 through 25 and if children then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs of Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, and remember James is writing about sufferings too. James is talking about trials and temptations and things that we go through. If you don't suffer anything, you're not going to reign with Christ. That's just what the Bible teaches. For I reckon that the sufferings of... That's not what we're talking about here, though. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. This creature here is talking about uh, the creation as in the living animals on the earth. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who have subjected the same in hope because of the fall of man the animals also are affected by that fall God slays animals to put coverings of clothes on, on Adam and Eve and they suffer they suffer their sacrifice excuse me they're eaten after the flood by man and don't you think that they're getting tired of being made steaks that they wouldn't mind having a little liberty and not being subject to all this <laughs> vanity. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who have subjected, subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption. Even the corruption of our sin has affected this whole earth. The cursed is the ground for thy sake. You know, even the ground is cursed, and God will remove that curse when he comes back, that the thorns and thistles will be, will be removed. Also, the animals uh, will be able to get along. They're not going to fear one another or fear man. Uh, a little child will play with an adder, and uh, the wolf will lay down with the lamb, not the lion lays down with the lamb. 
you know, that's what everybody thinks the Bible says, but it says the wolf, which makes more sense because wolves are the creature that we always associate with going after lambs. And the wolf cometh not but for to steal and to kill and destroy. Wolves like to come and destroy lambs. But here in this time of the millennial reign, uh, when the son of God, sons of God are made manifest, that is, <laughs> right now we're not made manifest. As Christ was not, he was manifest in the flesh, but his glory was not manifest. Likewise, our glory is not also manifest. Not in this earth. People look at us and they say, oh, you're crazy, you're a fanatic, you're a religious nut. But they do not, they do not see us as what we are, sons of God. Just as they saw Christ, they thought, oh, you're just from Nazareth, uh, who taught you, who gave you this authority to speak. Uh, you, you claim to be the Son of God and all this, but they cannot see. All they seen him was, all they seen him as was a man. And likewise, when huh, when we're on this earth, present tense, we are just seen as men. We are not seen as sons of God, but the creature is waiting for us to be seen and made manifest as sons of God. Why? Because it's going to deliver them also from the bondage of corruption, verse 21, into the glorious liberty of the children of God. They are not going to be made the children of God. we got to look at that carefully because I looked at that and I thought, well, are they going to be created also as children of God? It doesn't say that. It says that they will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of not into the children of God, not into the glorious children of God, but the glorious liberty of the children of God. They will be delivered from the bondage of a mundane life. <laughs> For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth and pain together until now, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. We groan too. We're waiting for the manifestation. We're, we're waiting for our Savior. We want to be like him. Even we ourselves, you know, because much of our life is vanity. Much of our life is routine. Much of our life is seemingly meaningless. Getting up, going to work, coming home, eating, sleeping, pooping. <laughs> Same stuff over and over. There's it's, got to be more to life than this. And there is. And we groan within ourselves. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves waiting for the adoption to wit, to know what? The redemption of our body. We want it to be a realization uh, we await that redemption. We await that resurrection. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we with hope, but if we hope for that that we see not, <laughs> then do we with patience wait for it. So, the creature is subject to vanity, and the creature also is awaiting the first fruits, the resurrection. <laughs> They want to see us be made manifest as the sons of God so that they could also be partakers of the liberty that we have. And that's a lot right there. Um, you know, I think we're going to quit there just for sake of time. I don't want to make these too long. I think we're probably around a half hour and that should be fine. This has been Approved Unto God. And uh, if you like this, I hope you join me again next time. Uh, we'll get into verses 19, 20, and 21. There's a whole lot there in 21, and just at the rate that I'm going, uh, I feel like that would probably be another 20 minutes or a half hour, and I don't want this message to be too long because, you know, Generation Z and the Millennials, they don't have much of an attention span, so we'll be merciful to them. <laughs> Join me next time.